Welcome back to Who Died Today US, the channel where we remember and honor the lives of those we've lost. From Hollywood stars to music legends and historic figures, we pay tribute to the legacies they left behind. If you want to keep their memories alive with us, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss a story. Quincy Jones, a legendary maestro whose genius shaped the soundtrack of the 20th century, passed away at the age of 91. Known simply as Q, Jones redefined American music, influencing genres from jazz to pop, funk to soul, and left an indelible mark through collaborations with icons like Frank Sinatra and Michael Jackson. Born on March 14, 1933, in Chicago, Jones's journey in music began with a trumpet and a piano he discovered as a child in Bremerton, Washington. Over a career that spanned more than six decades, he embraced every role music had to offer. Trumpeter, composer, arranger, producer, band leader, and even film score composer. With 27 Grammy Awards and countless other honors, Jones's contributions have earned him the reputation of one of the most versatile, prolific figures in music. In the 1950s and 60s, Jones honed his craft under the tutelage of jazz greats like Count Basie and Dizzy Gillespie, launching him into a world of endless opportunity. One of his defining collaborations was with Frank Sinatra, arranging the iconic rendition of Fly Me to the Moon, the first music played on the moon during the Apollo 11 mission. However, Jones's impact on pop music exploded in his work with Michael Jackson, producing Off the Wall, Thriller, and Bad. These albums not only showcased Jackson's talent, but also altered the pop landscape forever, with Thriller selling over 70 million copies and cementing Jackson as a global icon. Hits like Beat It and Billie Jean underscored Jones's genius for blending musical styles to reach a broad audience. In addition to music, Jones co-produced Steven Spielberg's film The Color Purple and launched The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, which introduced Will Smith to Hollywood. His humanitarian endeavors included organizing the star-studded recording of We Are the World in 1985, raising millions to fight famine in Africa, and setting the tone for the session with a sign that read, Leave Your Ego at the Door. Jones's vision extended beyond music into publishing, founding Vibe magazine to give voice to hip-hop culture, and he tirelessly supported numerous charitable foundations. His life was one of boundless creativity and enduring influence, leaving a legacy of excellence and compassion. As we say goodbye to Quincy Jones, we remember a visionary whose artistry knew no boundaries and whose work will continue to inspire generations. His legacy is that of an artist who, through music, brought people together, crossed cultures, and shared his universal love for creativity. Pamela Salem, who passed away at the age of 80, was a beloved British actress celebrated for her remarkable versatility across both British and American television and film. Born in Bombay, India, and educated in England and Germany, Salem's life was defined by her deep passion for the performing arts, which she pursued with distinction from the Central School of Speech and Drama in London. Salem left an indelible mark on British television in the early 1980s, captivating audiences as the cunning sorceress Belor in the fantasy series Into the Labyrinth. She won further acclaim for her portrayal of Joanne Francis, a shady mafia associate, in the BBC's EastEnders. Her performances displayed a remarkable talent for capturing complex, often enigmatic characters that remain iconic to fans of British television. Her Doctor Who roles, notably twos in The Robots of Death and Professor Rachel Jensen in Remembrance of the Daleks, solidified her place in the hearts of science fiction enthusiasts, a legacy she continued in the audio drama Countermeasures. In film, Salem's versatility shone as she portrayed Miss Moneypenny opposite Sean Connery in the unofficial Bond film Never Say Never Again. Her film career also included roles in The First Great Train Robbery, Gods and Monsters, and several British thrillers and dramas, showcasing her adaptability and the elegance she brought to each character. Her unique voice was sought after as well. She voiced the Queen in the English version of Helsing Ultimate OVA 4, further extending her reach into new genres. Beyond her professional achievements, Salem was admired for her warmth, dedication, and resilience. 
She shared her life with actor Michael O'Hagan, her husband until his passing in 2017. Together, they built a life in Surfside, Florida, where she continued to pursue creative projects and connect with fans until her passing. Pamela Salem's contributions to the arts were celebrated across genres and continents, bringing a refined presence to every role she undertook. Her legacy lives on through the many memorable characters she brought to life, her influence on generations of viewers and aspiring actors, and the grace with which she lived her life. She will be missed dearly, remembered fondly, and cherished for her timeless impact on stage and screen. Captain Charlie Griff Griffin, who passed away at the age of 65, was a beloved cast member of Wicked Tuna, Outer Banks and an experienced fisherman whose passion for the sea was matched only by his big-hearted spirit. Griffin tragically lost his life in a boating accident while traveling with a friend for vessel repairs, a journey that ended in sorrow but highlighted his unwavering dedication to his craft. His faithful dog, Layla, accompanied him on this final voyage, symbolizing the close connection he had not only with those around him, but with the things he cherished most. Captain Charlie joined Wicked Tuna, Outer Banks with his son, earning a place in the hearts of fans across seasons two through five. Known for captaining the reels of fortune, he brought an undeniable energy and love for the sport, as well as a sense of camaraderie that defined the series. His drive to navigate the challenging waters of the Outer Banks in search of the prized Atlantic bluefin tuna was fueled by a deep respect for both the ocean and the traditions of commercial fishing. His presence on the show wasn't just about the catch, it was about embodying the resilience and hard work that coastal life demands. National Geographic and Pilgrim Media Group reflected the sentiments of many in their statement, honoring Charlie as a spirited fisherman with a big heart. His love for fishing extended beyond his vessel and crew. He was part of a larger family of fishermen who respected the sea and the challenges it brought, and his legacy will remain a vital part of that community. Captain Griffin's final journey was met with adverse conditions, visibility just over half a mile, rough seas of four to six feet, and persistent winds. The Coast Guard, along with local partners, conducted an exhaustive 41-hour search, covering 400 miles by air, sea, and land. Though it was with heavy hearts that they ultimately suspended the search for his friend, Chad Dunn, the efforts demonstrated the depth of care felt for both men. As his family, cast members, and fans mourn his untimely passing, they also celebrate a life lived with courage, humor, and an unwavering dedication to the sea. Captain Charlie Griffin leaves behind a legacy of passion, strength, and a love for the waters he navigated so masterfully. His memory will continue to inspire those who love the ocean, reminding us all of the unbreakable bond between fishermen and sea. Steve Lawrence, who passed away at the age of 88, left a profound impact on the worlds of music, television, and Broadway. As one half of the beloved pop duo Steve and Adie, he and his wife Adie Gourmet, delighted audiences for over five decades with their vibrant chemistry and timeless performances. Together, they brought American standards to life, captivating audiences from their early days on The Tonight Show in the 1950s through to Gourmet's retirement in 2009. Their effortless harmony both on and off the stage made them a legendary act, celebrated with Grammy and Emmy Awards, as well as a Lifetime Achievement Honor from the Songwriters Hall of Fame. Born as Sidney Leibowitz in Brooklyn, Lawrence showed an early passion for singing, eventually winning a spot on The Tonight Show starring Steve Allen, where he met 80. This partnership blossomed into a marriage and career that showcased not only their musical talent, but also their charm, humor, and warmth. Their performance of hits like Go Away Little Girl remains emblematic of an era in which Lawrence's smooth voice graced charts and concert halls alike. His single Go Away Little Girl reached number one, one on the U.S. charts, and his recordings became classic hits that still resonate with fans. Beyond music, Lawrence shone as a versatile actor, from Broadway to television. His portrayal of Sammy Glick in What Makes Sammy Run garnered him a Tony nomination and further solidified his place in entertainment history. 
He also delighted audiences in memorable roles on The Carol Burnett Show, The Blues Brothers, and countless TV appearances, including his recurring role on The Nanny, where he won over a new generation of fans. Steve and 80s Bond remained a hallmark of their lives, even as they faced personal tragedies, including the untimely loss of their son, Michael. Through heartbreak, they leaned on each other, taking time to heal, but returning to bring joy to their fans. Lawrence's later years saw him courageously share his journey with Alzheimer's, an openness that spoke to his strength and resilience. Steve Lawrence's passing marks the end of a golden chapter in American entertainment. His legacy, woven through countless albums, Broadway stages, and heartfelt performances, lives on, forever cherished by fans and celebrated by an industry he helped shape. Jerry Taylor, who passed away at the age of 86, left an indelible mark on the landscape of television and science fiction. Known for her invaluable contributions to Star Trek The Next Generation and Star Trek Voyager, Taylor's work brought depth and humanity to a genre often known for its technical brilliance, but not always its warmth. Her unique perspective, grounded in rich storytelling and character development, became a guiding force behind many iconic Star Trek episodes that have inspired generations of fans. Born in Evansville, Indiana, Jerry's journey to Hollywood was paved with dedication to storytelling. She attended Indiana University and later earned a master's in English from California State University, Northridge. Beginning her career as a writer for series like Little House on the Prairie and The Incredible Hulk, Taylor honed her skills in character-driven drama and adventure. Her work as a producer on Quincy M.E. and Jake and the Fat Man gave her a strong foundation in television production, skills she would soon bring to Star Trek. Joining the next generation in its fourth season, Taylor quickly became a vital creative force on the series. As co-executive producer alongside Rick Berman and Michael Piller, she was instrumental in shaping the series' later seasons, even serving as showrunner for the seventh season. Among her numerous contributions were beloved episodes like Final Mission, which bid farewell to Will Wheaton's character, Wesley Crusher, and The Drumhead, a powerful commentary on justice and integrity that remains a fan favorite. Her role grew even further with the creation of Star Trek, Voyager, which she co-developed with Berman and Pillar. As head of the writing staff, Taylor infused Voyager with her signature focus on nuanced character arcs, notably creating deeper backgrounds for characters like Captain Janeway. Her influence helped bring forth a new generation of strong, relatable characters, including Star Trek's first female captain as a series lead, who inspired fans worldwide. Taylor's legacy extends beyond the screen. Her contributions also include Star Trek novels that explored the rich backstories of the characters she crafted. Her screenwriting archives, donated to Indiana University, remain a testament to her dedication to the craft and her belief in the power of storytelling to evoke both wonder and reflection. Jerry Taylor will be remembered as a visionary who brought warmth, intelligence, and humanity to Star Trek, shaping a legacy that will continue to reach across galaxies and generations. Her impact on science fiction, her championing of complex characters, and her skill in blending human drama with adventure have left an enduring legacy. Liam Payne, who passed away at the age of 31, left an extraordinary legacy in music and entertainment that began with his time in the global phenomenon One Direction. Born in Wolverhampton, England, Payne's journey to stardom began when he captivated audiences as a contestant on The X Factor, a competition that ultimately led to the formation of One Direction alongside Harry Styles, Niall Horan, Louis Tomlinson, and Zayn Malik. The band's rise to success was meteoric, and Payne's voice and songwriting talents helped shape hits like Story of My Life and What Makes You Beautiful, which resonated with millions around the world. As a solo artist, Payne continued to evolve, reaching new audiences with his debut single, Strip That Down, which achieved multi-platinum status in several countries. Payne's music explored genres from pop to R&B, showcasing his versatile talent and drive to push creative boundaries. His collaborations with artists like Rita Ora, Zedd, and J Balvin further solidified his place in the music industry, bringing both commercial success and artistic acclaim.
Despite his achievements, Payne faced numerous personal challenges, including struggles with substance abuse and mental health. He spoke openly about his battles, which allowed him to connect deeply with fans who found comfort in his honesty and resilience. His philanthropic work was another testament to his caring spirit, supporting charities such as UNICEF, Children in Need, and food banks through the Trussell Trust during the pandemic. Liam's impact extended far beyond his music. Known for his down-to-earth personality and generosity, he fostered a lasting bond with fans and inspired many with his journey. His work as an advocate for mental health and food security underscored his compassion and desire to make a positive difference. His unexpected passing has left a profound void, felt by fans, family, and the music world alike. As fans gather across the globe to pay tribute, Liam's legacy will continue to live on through his music and the memories he created for millions. He will be remembered not only for his talent, but for his kindness and humanity. Liam Payne's influence on music and the lives he touched will forever remain a cherished part of his legacy. Nicholas Pryor, who passed away at the age of 89, was a deeply respected character actor whose career spanned nearly 70 years. Pryor's humility and dedication to his craft were as noteworthy as his extensive list of roles across television, film, and stage. His widow, actress Christine Belford, shared Pryor's simple yet moving message with the world after his passing. Nicholas Pryor was enormously grateful to have been, for nearly 70 years, a working actor. This message reflects a life and career driven by a profound passion for performance and an unwavering commitment to his art. Born Nicholas David Probst in Baltimore, Maryland, Pryor's journey in acting began early and he quickly became known for his adaptability and sincerity on screen. His diverse roles ranged from a nervous college professor in the Gumball Rally, 1976, to a stern father in Risky Business, 1983, where he starred alongside a young Tom Cruise. Pryor also portrayed emotionally complex characters, such as the estranged father of Robert Downey Jr., S. character in Less Than Zero, 1987, his performances conveyed the depth and nuance of the everyday man, and he seamlessly adapted to roles in thrillers like Damien, Omen 2, comedy classics like Airplane, and even intense dramas such as Executive Decision and Collateral Damage. One of Pryor's most recognized television roles was as Chancellor A. Milton Arnold in Beverly Hills, 90210. From 1994 to 1997, he became a familiar face to millions as the fatherly yet composed figure guiding students at California University, adding yet another layer of relatability and sincerity to his career. Pryor also held memorable roles in soap operas such as Another World, The Edge of Night, and General Hospital, where his nuanced portrayals resonated deeply with fans and elevated the stories of each series. Off-screen, Pryor's love for acting was matched only by his love for his family. He is survived by his daughter, Stacy Pryor, and grandchildren, August and Avril Bass, who carry forward his legacy. His passing marks the end of an era, leaving an indelible mark on Hollywood and a treasure trove of performances that will continue to inspire actors and audiences alike. Nicholas Pryor's legacy is a testament to the impact of a steady, devoted career in the arts. His talent, humility, and steadfast passion for acting will remain cherished by fans, colleagues, and loved ones, a reminder of a life lived fully on and off the stage. Ron Ely, who passed away at the age of 86, was an actor and novelist known for his iconic portrayal of Tarzan in the NBC series of the same name during the 1960s. With his towering six feet four inches frame and athletic prowess, Ely embodied the spirit of the jungle hero, performing almost all his own stunts. The role catapulted him to fame and showcased his fearless dedication, with his performance marked by countless injuries, including broken shoulders and even lion bites, a testament to his commitment to bringing authenticity to his roles. Ely's legacy extended beyond Tarzan. In the 1975 film, Doc Savage, The Man of Bronze, he captured the essence of the titular pulp fiction hero, once again illustrating his adaptability and commanding screen presence. 
He also hosted the Miss America pageant in 1980 and 1981, bringing his signature charm to a different kind of stage. Ely's impressive television career included notable roles in series like Fantasy Island, Wonder Woman, Sea Hunt, and Superboy, and his guest appearances in these series endeared him to audiences over decades. He was a charismatic host of Face the Music, where he entertained millions as he guided contestants through musical challenges. In the 1990s, Ely transitioned from acting to writing, crafting mystery novels that introduced readers to private investigator Jake Sands. His novels Night Shadows and East Beach allowed him to channel his creativity into storytelling in a new way, adding another layer to his already rich artistic legacy. Ely's life was not without personal tragedy. In 2019, his wife, Valerie Lundeen, a former Miss Florida USA, was tragically killed, and their son Cameron was fatally shot by police at the scene. Eli displayed strength in the aftermath, seeking accountability and justice. Despite the trials he faced, Ely's resilience remained strong, demonstrating the depth of his character off-screen. His passing at the home of one of his daughters marked the end of an era, but Ron Ely's influence on television, film, and literature will remain indelible. His dedication to his craft, courage in the face of adversity, and memorable roles in beloved series and films have solidified his place in Hollywood history. Eli leaves behind a legacy of strength, talent, and authenticity that will continue to inspire fans for generations. Kenneth Cope, who passed away at the age of 93, was a beloved English actor celebrated for his unique contributions to British television, film, and theater. Known for his vibrant portrayal of Marty Hopkirk, the ghostly detective in Randall and Hopkirk, Cope won audiences' hearts with his blend of humor, charm, and mystery, securing his place in British pop culture history. Born in Liverpool, Cope began his acting journey after training at the Bristol Old Vic Theatre School, and he soon became a fixture on British screens, starting with his role as the crafty Jed Stone in Coronation Street in the early 1960s. His return to Coronation Street decades later in 2008 was a nostalgic moment for fans, reaffirming his status as one of the show's most cherished characters. Beyond his soap opera stardom, Cope's versatility shown in the satirical That Was the Week That Was and in the Carry On films, where he brought humor and relatability to audiences in roles that ranged from rebellious shop stewards to awkward romantics. A man of varied talents, Cope was also a scriptwriter. His work included Stryker, a children's TV series inspired by his son's local football team, and the BBC sitcom A Sharp Intake of Breath, showcasing his ability to craft stories that resonated across generations. His guest roles in series such as Doctor Who, Juliet Bravo, Waking the Dead, and A Touch of Frost cemented his reputation as a skilled character actor, able to bring depth to any role he inhabited. Cope's dedication extended into his personal life, where he shared 63 years of marriage with his wife, actress Rennie Lister, whom he met on the set of Coronation Street. Together, they raised three children who each found their paths in the creative arts, carrying forward their father's legacy of creativity and passion. In retirement, Cope contributed a weekly column to the Southport Visitor, offering glimpses into his thoughts, experiences, and the community he loved. Kenneth Cope will be remembered for his warmth, wit, and the authenticity he brought to his roles. His legacy spans generations, from classic British television to the hearts of fans worldwide, and his enduring influence on British entertainment will not be forgotten. Laurent Tirard, who passed away at the age of 57 after a courageous battle with cancer, was a French director and screenwriter celebrated for his insightful contributions to cinema. Known for his ability to bring both wit and warmth to the screen, Tirard's films reached audiences across the world, from sophisticated adaptations of classic literature to beloved children's stories. Born on February 18, 1967, in Roubaix, France, Tirard was inspired early on by American films, especially the works of Steven Spielberg. His love for cinema led him to study filmmaking at New York University, where he began to develop his unique perspective on storytelling. 
His time in the United States also included a role as a script reader at Warner Brothers, experiences that enriched his understanding of the film industry from multiple angles. Returning to France, he spent six years as a journalist with Studio Magazine, during which he conducted in-depth interviews with some of the world's most acclaimed directors. These conversations with filmmakers like Woody Allen, David Cronenberg, and the Coen brothers later culminated in Movie Maker's Masterclass, Private Lessons from the World's Foremost Directors, a book that has since become a guide for aspiring filmmakers worldwide. In 1997, Tirard fully transitioned to film and television, bringing his passion for storytelling to life through screenwriting and direction. His first feature film, The Story of My Life, was released in 2004, and he soon after gained widespread recognition for his screenplay of Prête Moi Ta Main, How to Get Married and Stay Single, a popular comedy that highlighted his skill in exploring relatable, humorous themes. Tirard's direction of Molière in 2007 showcased his love for literature and classical storytelling, and his film adaptation of Le Petit Nicolas in 2009 introduced the cherished French children's character to a new generation, cementing Tirard's place in the hearts of families. The film's success led to a sequel, Nicholas on Holiday, in 2014, which continued to captivate audiences with Tirard's blend of nostalgia and humor. Laurent Tirard's work embodies a unique intersection of humor, heart, and a profound appreciation for storytelling. His contributions to cinema remain a testament to his vision and his ability to connect with audiences of all ages. Laurent's legacy as a storyteller, a teacher, and a creator will continue to inspire, reminding us of the power of film to bring joy, reflection, and understanding to our lives. Johnny Godreau, the beloved hockey star known as Johnny Hockey, passed away at the age of 31, in a tragic accident that also claimed the life of his younger brother, Matthew. The brothers were struck by an alleged drunk driver while cycling in Oldman's Township, New Jersey, a devastating end to the lives of two remarkable young men, each with their own storied impact on and off the ice. Born on August 13, 1993, in Salem, New Jersey, Johnny's journey to the NHL began with his natural talent and perseverance. Despite his smaller stature, he quickly became one of hockey's brightest stars, after excelling with the Boston College Eagles, where he won the Hobie Baker Award as the best player in NCAA men's ice hockey, Johnny was drafted by the Calgary Flames in 2011. His impact was immediate, dazzling fans and earning accolades such as NHL All-Star selections and the Lady Bing Memorial Trophy for his exceptional sportsmanship. His dedication to his team and sport was evident, and he quickly earned respect and admiration from fans and players alike. Johnny's career reached new heights when he signed with the Columbus Blue Jackets in 2022. His decision to join Columbus over other offers surprised many, but showed his commitment to building community and loyalty to his family and values. Even in challenging seasons, Johnny was an inspiring presence, leading the Blue Jackets both on and off the ice. Known for his humility and genuine love for the game, Johnny was more than just a player. He was a symbol of hope and dedication for fans around the world. The impact of his passing was felt across the hockey community and beyond. Makeshift memorials were established outside the Blue Jackets' nationwide arena, the Flames' Scotiabank Saddle Dome, and local sites connected to Johnny's life. Fellow players, teams, and fans honored his legacy with heartfelt tributes from his peers and notable figures, including a number change by Cole Caulfield to commemorate Johnny's iconic number 13. Both Columbus and Calgary held memorial vigils, where moments of silence and speeches from teammates reminded all of Johnny's indelible mark on the sport. Johnny Gaudreau's legacy will forever endure, not only for his incredible skill and grace on the ice, but for his kindness humility, and commitment to community. He leaves behind a legacy of resilience, warmth, and joy for hockey fans, and a lasting inspiration that reminds us of the preciousness of life. Kevin Sullivan, the legendary wrestling figure known for his complex and captivating characters, passed away at the age of 75 due to complications from a blood clot. 
With a career that spanned over five decades, Sullivan left an indelible mark on the world of professional wrestling, blending raw physicality with his unique ability to tell stories that mesmerized audiences. Born in Cambridge, Massachusetts, Sullivan began his wrestling journey in the 1970s, and it didn't take long for him to make waves with his intense presence in the ring. Known as the Boston Battler in his early years, Sullivan cultivated a reputation as a fierce and unyielding wrestler. Yet it was his transformation into the Prince of Darkness during his championship wrestling from Florida days that etched him into the annals of wrestling history. Playing the role of a dark cult leader with a touch of mystique and menace, Sullivan drew fans and opponents alike into unforgettable storylines. His Army of Darkness faction became a cultural phenomenon, and his intense feuds with icons like Dusty Rhodes and Barry Windham were nothing short of legendary. Sullivan's career was not confined to his in-ring abilities. His prowess as a booker reshaped wrestling in the 1990s as he masterminded captivating angles in world championship wrestling, even forming infamous groups like the Dungeon of Doom to keep fans on the edge of their seats. Sullivan's storytelling prowess in wrestling reached its zenith in WCW, where he was instrumental in shaping the careers of rising stars and maintaining the promotion's intrigue during its most competitive years. Beyond his work in WCW, Sullivan continued to make appearances in various wrestling promotions, adapting to new roles as a manager, booker, and even a commentator. His later years saw him bringing his decades of experience to independent promotions, helping to guide and mentor the next generation of wrestling talent. Known for his deep commitment to the craft, Sullivan also ventured into podcasting, where he shared his wealth of knowledge, keeping the spirit of wrestling's golden era alive for both loyal fans and new audiences. Kevin Sullivan's influence on wrestling went far beyond the characters he portrayed. He was a master of his craft, leaving a legacy that will continue to inspire and entertain generations to come. His life, one of unyielding passion and dedication to wrestling, will be remembered by fans and colleagues worldwide. Robert Bannis, who passed away at the age of 90, leaves behind an incredible legacy as a dancer, actor, choreographer, and teacher who brought energy and creativity to every project he touched. Known to many for his role in the iconic film West Side Story, Banas's dedication to the world of dance and his contributions to film, television, and stage spanned more than half a century. From an early age, Banas was captivated by the rhythm of big bands and couldn't resist moving to the beat. His love for dance started at just five years old and quickly grew into a lifelong passion. Encouraged by his parents, he began formal training in ballroom dance during World War II. Soon after, he found his place in the Michael Panyev Children's Ballet Company, performing alongside future stars like Natalie Wood and Jill St. John. With his exceptional talent and infectious enthusiasm, he thrived in numerous stage productions, including Carousel, Kiss Me Kate, and Peter Pan, before making his way to the silver screen. Banas made his film debut in classics like West Side Story and Mary Poppins, where he showcased his boundless energy and remarkable skill as a dancer and performer. He made television appearances as well, guest starring in popular shows, and left an especially memorable mark on The Judy Garland Show in 1964, performing his lively choreography to Shirley Ellis's The Nitty Gritty, this particular performance experienced a revival decades later on YouTube, where it amassed millions of views, a testament to Banas's timeless charisma and ability to capture an audience. Beyond performing, Banas became an influential choreographer and a cherished dance coach in Los Angeles, inspiring countless young dancers. Known for his dedication to his students and his ability to translate music into dynamic movement, he enriched the lives of all who had the chance to work with him. His passing due to pneumonia at an assisted living facility in Encino, California, is a loss felt by fans, friends, and family alike. Robert Bannis's legacy will forever live on in the dances he crafted, the stories he helped tell on screen, and the countless dancers he inspired. His work continues to resonate, capturing the joy and artistry of dance for generations to come. 
Breaking news, news one. Robert Downey Jr., famed for his roles as Iron Man and Sherlock Holmes, has wowed fans with a remarkable transformation, showcasing his dedication to fitness and health at age 58. Known for taking on roles that require physical agility, the actor's recent weight loss is not just about looking the part, but also feeling his best. Downey credits a balanced fitness regimen, blending cardio, strength training, and Wing Chun Kung Fu for helping him stay agile and toned. He's also embraced a high-protein, nutrient-dense diet, focusing on lean meats, vegetables, and complex carbs. Though he initially tried veganism, Downey adjusted his diet to suit his active lifestyle. Working with a personal trainer has been key to maintaining his results, as he keeps his workouts dynamic and tailored to his evolving goals. Downey's journey serves as an inspiration, showing that with focus and discipline, health transformations are possible at any age. Whether gearing up for another action-packed role or prioritizing long-term wellness, Downey's commitment is motivating fans to pursue their own fitness goals. News 2. England cricket captain Ben Stokes has revealed that a masked gang targeted his home while he was abroad for a test series in Pakistan. His wife and two young children were present during the break-in, though thankfully unharmed. The emotional toll, however, has been significant. In a heartfelt statement, the 33-year-old shared, The worst part is that this happened while my family was home. We're grateful everyone is safe, but this experience has deeply affected us. Among the stolen items were his OBE medal and several pieces of personal jewelry, each holding high sentimental value. Stokes, who resides in Castle Eden, County Durham, released images of the stolen items, appealing for public assistance. This isn't just about recovering what was taken, it's about finding those responsible, he emphasized. Durham police have confirmed that an investigation is underway.